it's cool if you don't want to. Right, if you have your Bibles, open them up to the book of Luke, chapter 21. <clears throat> Where will we be at? Yeah, yeah. Ready? Now, tonight is a very quick, simple lesson about uh, a lady. Her name was Widow, and she had some money, and it was called Mites. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight, all right? This lady named Widow and her money called Mites. She, you could say that she, she had mighty money. Okay, you could not say that. Um, the Butterball Turkey Company has a 1-800 number, hotline as it's called. A hotline means there's somebody on the other end of it. That's what it used to mean anyway. What you do is you call that number if you got any turkey-related questions. There was a lady that called, and she said, I have a turkey in my freezer. It's been in my freezer for 23 years, and I was wondering, is it still okay to eat and consume this turkey? The Butterball representative and turkey aficionado let her know that as long as it stayed frozen that entire time, it was probably safe for consumption, but she wouldn't recommend it because the taste had probably deteriorated over the years. So the lady, with her wisdom and this knowledge that she had been given, said, oh, okay, well, I'll just give it to the church. They're giving some away for Christmas. Yeah, y'all got it. Some people thought that was a good idea. Let's give it to somebody that might want it. That's not given the right way. There are bad presents and there are good gifts. And I hope you see the difference in the two. When your grandma gives you socks for Christmas, it's because she had to get you something. Problem is she's on a fixed income, so she couldn't get you much. So you wind up with bad presents. Okay? No offense to anybody giving socks. But I'm just saying, every kid, I remember being a kid, I would have rather gone barefooted than to get socks as a present. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. I remember that feeling, opening up clothes, and I'm like, this is like a uniform. Whatever it was, it wasn't a present. It's not a present that I wanted. Y'all understand what I'm talking about, right? The Bible speaks so often about gifts and good gifts and uh, how, how, how greater gifts will your heavenly Father give if your earthly Father knows how to give good gifts. Um, over and over again, we are told and taught about in our Bible about the gifts that are given that God gave to us, and what does He want back from us? Yeah, just love. You don't want much, right? Now, here in the book of Luke, y'all, this morning I was, I was talking about on, on over in uh, verse 5 on down, but right here in verse number 1, Jesus had just got through getting on to these Pharisees and, and kind of, I guess, fleecing them, all right? But it says in verse 1, as he looked up, Jesus saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. See? That's what they did. They put the gifts in the treasury. When they came in, they pulled out the gifts, put it in there. That's what they did. Right? Amen. That's what they did. He also saw, saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Let's see. I don't have a mite. We'll get back to that. In verse 3, he said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave gifts out of their wealth, 
But she gave out of her poverty and she put in all that she had to live on. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. She knows that she is putting in what she got. These other people are putting in what they got, but not all that they had to live on. The temple in that time of Jesus' day, y'all, when He went into that temple and He saw the state of it, He got upset and started flipping over tables and all kinds of stuff because people were using the church for reasons other than worship. And it was, it was like they were having a big yard sale up in there. And, and he, he was like, this is where you should be worshiping, not, not peddling pigeons. They had 13 different chests inside the temple. okay, And they, they were for various offerings. And the first two um, were for the yearly tribute that you had to pay. It was kind of like tithing back then was a tax. Y'all, there are churches today that will make sure that you tithe. You know, they need your W-2 to make sure that you give the right portion. And it's in, done in the name of accountability. Well, back then, it was kind of like that. You, you had to give a certain amount every year. That's what you gave for your sins. They had it figured up to a monetary value. That's pretty handy, ain't it? Y'all want to do that? How much you owe this week? How bad you been? Right? You been really bad? You know, how many four-letter words did you use? That'll be a dollar apiece. The swear jar, the offering plate, is there a difference? It wasn't then. It's kind of the same. I I never put that together. All right. So the first two were, were for those yearly tributes that were made to the temple, and then they had, and I ain't making this up, they had a chest for turtle doves. Hmm? They had a chest for pigeons. They they had a chest for wood, for incense, for for golden vessels. And then they had two set aside for leftover money after you bought the animals for the burnt offerings that you had to do before you even got into place. You had to go in and and do the burnt offerings first, and then you could come on in, and that's where the chests were, so the leftover money would be going into that. All right? Now, there were... Three more boxes that were set up for voluntary contributions. That is what we call offerings nowadays. But after the tithe, this is extra that if you want to give, you put money into that. And that's where all of these rich people were coming up, and they had already paid all of the customary ritual stuff, the stuff that they had to pay, um, all the required stuff, the offering stuff, the extra stuff, and here they are with the, the, the leftover, the extra, the voluntary stuff, and they are just piling it on as loud as they possibly can. Over and over, Jesus was there in that temple watching them people come in with their lavishness, watching and just, oh, look at here, Lord. Look at us. Look at us. Ain't we awesome? Look at how much good we're doing. That's what was happening. But in all of that racket, this lady came up. We're going to let this be the mites. Okay? This lady come up, not making a a racket or a fuss or anything, in the extra offering plate, out of her poverty, she put in all that she had to live on. This represents every bit of food, every bit of living, every bit of everything. She just puts them on down in there. But look, she wasn't following up all of these crazy folk. When Jesus was there, she just walked on by and just put them in. That offering sounded different to Jesus. When Jesus heard that offering, He heard it because it came from her heart. All these other people were making a spectacle of their offering. They did it with their prayers. They they did it with their offering. Every single thing was about bringing recognition to themselves. Look at how pious I am. Look at how holy I am. Look at my greatness. Look at my goodness. And that's what the people were doing during that time. No wonder it was so easy for them to just kill Jesus. Right? 
They didn't really care a lot. These wealthy folks would just come up and dump their offering in these metal chests. You know, in the Talmud, the, uh, in the Hebrew text, the receptacle that they put their offering in, it wasn't a chest. It was actually called a trumpet. And it was shaped, it was like a metal thing, but it like bowed up on the end like a trumpet. You know? And that's what they would put their money in. I picture like a spittoon. Y'all ever watch cartoons when, when I don't know, for, for some reason, the cartoons from the 70s could always spit tobacco and ring the bucket and make it ding when they did it, which made me want to chew tobacco. <laughs> I was like, that looks like a fun trick. <laughs> ding! Yeah. But anyway, it don't really work like that. You just get it on your chin or down the side of your truck. Um Nah, I better not. You know how uh, you know how you know somebody's from Coosa County? There's a spit stain on both sides of the truck. I said Coosa. I said Coosa. He's got a buddy. He's got a buddy. <laughs> Not his girlfriend. <laughs> Y'all got the joke. <laughs> oh, me. Yeah. You know, when Jesus saw what this lady had done, he said, she, out of her poverty put in all that she had to live on. When Jesus saw her give the way that she gave and what she gave, He noticed how her life was. He noticed that He said this poor widow. Poor indicates that she did not have anything else. And being a widow, that is, that's a that's a bad thing to be known for. This lady had lost her husband, did not have somebody there to take care of her anymore. So Jesus was acknowledging that this woman was alone. She was by herself. And with her taking care of herself, relying on herself, ain't got nobody else's stuff, just her own, and she gave everything she had. This woman, she... she God, you saw fit for my husband to die? You saw fit to give me these two mites? I trusted you through all of that, and I'm going to trust you through this. If I'm supposed to eat again, you're going to give it to me. If I'm supposed to have anything, I'm trusting in you for it. I'm giving you everything I got, and you give me what I need. And that was the spirit that was in this lady's heart. And Jesus heard it. He saw it. And a mite was, was just a very small thing. It made some noise. But I don't know if anybody around there heard it other than Jesus. Because there was so much. Look, look down in verse 5 for a moment. All the disciples were looking at, at how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. That's what those rich people were bringing in. That's what they were doing. Looking at all the fancy, ornate stuff. Look at what we built, church. Look at what we did. Look at how fancy it is, right? That's what they were doing. And this lady comes in and just worships right in the middle of them. Her robes in tatters. Imagine her, her sandals are, are worn thin. Probably got a like a head covering, and and it's probably not very good. This kind of sacrifice is a lot like the sacrifice of the the widow lady who had just enough for one more meal. 
but she gave. And that act of giving is why God blessed her with enough for all they needed. That's just the way God does it. In the book of Lamentations, I forgot to send this to you, Jody. In Lamentations 3, um, 22, the Bible says, because of the Lord's great love, we're not consumed. For His compassions never fail. Never. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's what the Bible says. Every single day. God, what am I supposed to have today? If you start the day with nothing but God, what do you think you're going to get that day? Huh? If you start the day with a whole bunch of turmoil left over from yesterday, what are you going to get that day? You see? These people were rich, and all they were toting around was a bunch of problems. This lady, she wasn't toting around anything. And what she was toting around, she gave. I'm not toting around any dead weight. I'm not toting around any unnecessariness. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to start the day with nothing but you, and I'm going to end the day with nothing but you. And everything in the middle is going to be nothing but you. What you want me to have, you give it to me. I don't know where I'm, where I'm going to gain heat or what I'm going to get to eat. I don't know where, where I'm going to stay. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You just take a step out and do it. And this is normally where the preacher starts saying, so that means you've got to give all of your money to the church because I need to buy a jet. Because it's such a long ride to Sylacauga. If y'all bought me a jet, I wouldn't even make it. I would crash probably in the, uh, probably, um, I probably would crash. I don't know. I've never flown a plane. I might be good at it. You know, you never know what you're good at till you do it. Or you could be really bad at it and then just only do it once. You know, I read this story years ago. I don't know if I've ever told y'all this before or not, but this is a story about giving. There was a little boy, seven or eight years old, and his older sister, they were they were somewhere, and she she was unconscious, and she needed some blood, and she had a rare blood type, but her little brother had the same blood type, and they told him, it was like, we need to give your sister some of your blood so that we can save her life. You're going to be saving your sister's life. And he was like, okay, okay. So he laid down on the stretcher beside her and they, they put the IV in and he's, he's stoic, he's concerned, he's scared, you can imagine, right? And they take his blood and transferring it over to his sister and she starts to get the blood. And all of a sudden some color comes back into her face. She starts feeling waking up, coming out of it and everything. And the doctor comes in and is like checking her out. Like, I think she's going to be all right. She's going to make it. I, I think we're out of the woods now. She's not critical anymore. Everything's going to be okay. And he asks the little, little fella, he's like, how are you doing? The little boy just starts crying. He says, Doc, how much longer do I have to live before I die? And the doctor said, what do you mean? He's like, well, my sister needed my blood so she could live. He said, I don't. I don't have any more. He thought that they gave him all his blood. He thought that all his blood had been taken. His sister needed all of it. And this little dude, okay. It's just, it's okay. It's like when when uh, Abraham took Isaac on the mountain, you know. I mean, the faith of a child is like, I don't, I can't figure out how this is going to work out. I don't understand how this is going to work out. I don't even know if this is going to work out. But I know it's going to be all right. I know it's going to be all right. I know it's going to be all right. 
just like all of those apostles, all of those disciples of Jesus Christ, he told them, it's going to be all right. And then they all got killed. But it was all right. Because one day, all the investments we made the right way, they'll pay dividends. One day for the things that you've done right, you'll finally be rewarded. You will finally get what you deserve. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to show up with just a dump truck full of stuff to give to the Lord? I mean, not. I don't want to show up with just like, y'all ever seen these little coin purses that they're plastic? You've seen them? And you squeeze them and they open up and do you still remember what it felt like getting your finger in it? I still can I could just felt that. Did you feel it? It's all, like it almost cuts, but it don't. Imagine if you showed up to the throne of Jesus Christ, and that's all you had was that. That little, that little coin purse full of good deeds. You know, if you got time today, give right. Give the right way. And at the end of it all, you will be so richly blessed with that moment of one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. I, I can't put it into words, y'all. This is me dreaming right now, okay? One-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. I want to lavish Him. I want to pour gifts on Him. You know what I mean? I want to cover up Jesus with crowns. That's what I want to do. I don't want to show up and, and be like, feeling like I should have done more or I could have done more. You know, I don't even know that we're going to feel that way when we get to heaven. But if we do, I don't want to feel like that. You know, when I get there, I want, to, I want to be glad that I served Him right. And that at the end of the day, He will say, well done. You know, you did good. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear like, well, you know, you hung in there. You know, I want Him to say, good job. Good job. This poor widow. Didn't have nothing else, but she had Jesus. And Jesus was enough for her. Man. All right, that's all. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father.